Mm-hmm. Today we're going to make a dish that I enjoy making. It's something I've been making for a couple of years well. And I mean, even before I started doing stuff on this channel, this is something that I've been making, you know, for quite some time on special occasions. And then sometimes just randomly because I really enjoy making it and eating it. And that is shredded beef or pulled beef. Now, usually when I make this, what I would do is get a huge chunk of beef, say it off, put it into some, well, submerge it in some water, put it into the oven and let it cook for about six hours, low and slow. And that results in a very nice, tender, flavorful beef. But today we didn't have time for that. Today I'm gonna show you a quick way to do it using the pressure cooker. But other than that, you know, other than the difference of using the pressure cooker to low and slow, everything else that I'm gonna show you today is exactly how I would make it. So yeah, let me jump into this. This, you see the shredded beef? This one is a special one. So let me get into it one time. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is make our dry rub. So I have some spices here. First thing I have is about three tablespoons of paprika, one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, one tablespoon of coriander seeds, one tablespoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of clove powder, one and a half tablespoons of salt, three tablespoons of brown sugar. So now we just wanna combine this. Make sure all those dry ingredients are well combined. Nice, now let's season our beef. So as I said, usually what I would do is have one huge chunk of beef that I would get from Curry Mini Market, but because we're doing it a quick and easy way, I have the pieces of beef cut up into pieces, you know, chunks. Now, obviously you're not gonna cut it into small chunks like if you go and do stew beef, because you want it to be pulled beef and not stew beef. So you still need to have, you know, some surface area to work with but it's not a huge chunk. So I guess like pieces like this will work, right? So I'm putting it into this bowl here. It's transferring it into a bigger bowl so I can mix. Add some of our dry rub. Add the remaining of our dry rub. Gonna add a little bit of oil. And now just get your hands in there. I wanna coat all the pieces of the beef. Okay, nice. So now that our beef is well seasoned with our dry rub along with the oil. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next part of the cooking process, and this is a very necessary step in the cooking process, is saying off the meat and getting some nice color on it. So you wanna make sure you get your pan nice and hot. And you just wanna add each piece and allow it to get some nice color and caramelization. What will happen here is that you'll be searing the outside of the meat and kind of locking in the flavor into the meat so that when the meat cooks, all that flavor that's seared on the outside gets to penetrate the meat and flavor the inside. And yeah, it's a little bit of science, but trust and believe this step is necessary. Don't skip this step. You want to sear it off, get some nice caramelization going on. Yeah, you want a nice flavor for the beef. All right, so after a couple minutes on each side, this piece is looking good. We have some nice color going on this. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. So I'm just gonna sear each piece until all of our pieces have a nice color going on it. And then we're good to go to the next step. And a good tip is to deglaze your pan to make the cleaning process a whole lot easier. I do believe in soaking pots, so yeah, you never come into my kitchen and see pots soaking. So deglaze the pan one time, that will remove all these sticky bits. And if you wanted, you probably could try to use this as part of your braising liquid for 
the beef, but I would not do that because I would have some concerns about the caramelization of the sugar, the burning of the sugar, and it's probably giving off a bitter aftertaste. So yeah, I wouldn't use this as my braising liquid. I would just use water. So basically this is just for ease of cleaning the frying pan. I'll tip there for you. All right, so I'm gonna add my pieces of beef to my pressure cooker. All the little liquid that would have remained in that bowl, adding that in. Adding 10 cups of water. I wanna make sure that all the pieces are beef covered. So, get all of them submerged in the water, in the braising liquid. And make sure you get all of the pieces submerged. We add in one head of garlic, about 12 cloves, add in three bay leaves, and one bundle of thyme that I just cut up into smaller pieces, and add in one tablespoon of ruku to the mix. Let's get that incorporated. All right, so now we're just gonna cover this and allow it to cook for 90 minutes. All right, so one hour and a half later, um, of course, you would let the pressure escape from the pressure cooker before opening, very important. And yeah, oh, the steam just fucking up the glands. Probably can't see nothing. Give it a while, give it a while, let's yeah, remove that steam. All right. So as you can see, if I just squeeze this here, as you can see, this is ready to fall apart. The meat falling off the meat, and I don't want the meat to fall back down inside here. So I'm gonna transfer it to a next pan or a next pot because we have one more thing to do before our pulled beef is done. So let's move on to the next step. But we're looking perfect here, perfect, tender. So the next part of the process is where we have to pull the beef apart, but I have an extra step that I like to take as well. Um, and it's totally optional, but for me, it's what gives my pearl beef that extra set of flavor. So I'm gonna transfer to this pan here, or this pot, all our pieces. And they are very tender. You wouldn't have to do much work Pulling this apart, as you can see here, like it's just breaking apart. So yeah, the meat falling off the meat. So we tender, we're ready to go. Of course, we wanna get all the garlic cloves in there as well too. So all that is flavor. So now we wanna take our forks and just shred the beef or pull it apart. So this is the shredded part of the shredded beef or the pulled part of the pulled beef. And people would shred the beef and then that would be it, you know, it'll be over at that point. But for me, I like to add one extra step to my pulled beef or my shredded beef that is just take it over the top. So I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes or oh, it'll be a few seconds for you few minutes for me, but uh, we're gonna get to that in a little bit. So I just wanna finish shredding the beef and then I'll show you the next step. A crucial step for me, optional if you don't wanna do it, but crucial for me in terms of having a very flavorful shredded beef. So here I have the braising liquid or the broth that's left over from the cooking process with um, cooking the beef. And you definitely don't wanna throw this out because obviously this has lots of flavor and lots of value in it. You could make soup with it. If you wanna make rice, you can make a nice rice with this as well and use this liquid to cook the rice in. 
But what I like to do now is use a cup of the broth that's remained here. I put the fire back on on the beef and I'm just gonna add the broth back onto the beef. And I'm just gonna let this simmer and reduce and that is going to incorporate even more intense flavor back into our beef so that when you're eating it, you get, you know, hearty flavor with every bite of your shredded beef. Now, as I say, some people might not do this step, but for me, this is a key step in making my pulled beef. I like to add some of the broth back and let it reduce and you get that nice, rich flavor going straight through the beef. Can't wait, can't wait. This is gonna be real good. Can't wait to eat this, can't wait to dig in. All right, so we're in a gear here. It took about five minutes for the liquid to reduce. And of course, you wanna taste for salt and that kind of thing at this point and adjust. I didn't need to, everything was fine. Everything on point, flavor's on point. So I just wanna switch off my flame now. And now is the moment I've been waiting for. And that is to dig in and taste this thing. So for me, I mean, pearl beef is the kind of thing that you could eat with like rice. If you want, you could, you know, have it in a wrap and that kind of thing. But the best way for me to enjoy this, one of the best ways I should say, is in a taco. So I have my little homemade uh, tortilla going on here, corn tortilla. Just adding some of that beef inside there. Nice. And then just topping it with some onions, celery, shadow benny, a little bit of lime juice, just to give a little freshness. Listen, when I tell you this beef tender and flavorful, I ain't lying, it real, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The combination of the spices, you know, clove powder, the coriander seeds, the paprika for the smokiness, brown sugar, give it a little bit of sweetness to balance off some of the savory that's going on there. And I mean, this is the kind of thing you could make a batch of it. And if you want to have it in a lime, you know, we have a lime going on, you eat some tacos. Or it's a good thing, a good way to meal prep because you could take the beef, shred it up, put some in the freezer, put some in the fridge and have it with different things. The possibilities endless in the way you could incorporate this into different meals. So definitely there's something you wanna try out. This will beef saying things. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and give it a share. I will post a link to the full recipe on our website in the video description, so look out for that. And if you do try this recipe, post your photos on social media. Would love to see it, always love to see it, so tag us in it. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna eat about 50 more of these tortillas. Ally, ally, or oh, you know I don't eat much. About two more.